You're tuned into the ADHD to Life podcast, hosted by Malachi. Tune in every week for a new episode. Check, 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 mic check, testing one, two, three. Hope you guys can hear me over here in this camera right here. I've got a microphone set up right here. That way it can hear me when I talk into it. I mean, it's kind of the point of the microphone anyway, and the whole recording progress, progress, I didn't mean to say progress, I meant to say progress, where's my water, oh, here we go, oh yeah, nice cold water, <laughs> alright, enough, <laughs> oh, that's refreshing, today was the first time in a long time that I got to play basketball. Not that I'm good at it or anything, you know. I don't have a jumper. I'm really good at defense for some reason. Like, I'm really good at defense, you know. What's that saying? Defense wins championships. Offense scores points. I think that's the saying. I don't know. I don't remember. But, yeah, let's just say I left the gym with a soaking wet t-shirt. And a sore throat because... Mother Nature decided to pray a ch- a, ch- a trick on us again. <clears throat> I had a I had a moment. My eyes started twi- like I could feel it twitching on the inside. It's due to lack of sleep and it's like a uh, brain malfunction. <laughs> but yeah, video podcast episode. Hopefully the camera on the ho- I'm I'm just I'm hoping that this camera works Uh, this is a first attempt so if it does go out i do apologize and that'll be it for this video you know but if you want to listen to the extended version of said podcast then it'll be available on spreaker apple podcast google podcast jio 7 and many more platforms such as youtube wait a minute did i just say youtube you know what, forget it, we're just going to jump into it. I'm going to start with the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse case. I just wanted to do an update on that. I, I, I owe this guy an apology, you know. I believe the hype that the media, our own media provided, and did not give him a fair judgment. After viewing the interview with Mr. Rittenhouse, I now realize that they did paint him as a white supremacist. And that he killed black people, that he crossed state lines, ran from the police. In fact, he tried turning himself into the police, right? And of Kanoa, and they pepper sprayed him and told him to go home. So he went to a nearby station and turned himself in there where he was placed under arrest. And he had to, he waited in jail for like 80, 80 something, 87 days for defending himself. So if you like, if you look at the footage and you watch the tapes, and listen to his interview that he did with the news. Um, he's talking about how he was attacked and how he was trying to defend himself. Dude said he was going to kill him. And that was one of the trigger words that I had learned in my self-defense class. Like, somebody tells you, hey, I'm going to kill you, you MF, something like that, along those words then you have the right to bear arms and to protect yourself. And that's exactly what he did. In fact, the fact that he had to serve jail time and was treated in such a way was ridiculous. I mean, he said it was pretty good in jail. I mean, he didn't really have a bad experience, you know. At first, it was like a little bit rough, you know, being away from his family, not being able to talk to anybody, being new, being fresh meat. What do they call it? The fish. Fish in the pond, fish in the pond, that's slang, I'm not sure if they even use the term fish, but in the show that I watch called uh, Prison Break, they would call Michael Schofield fish, you know, because he's the new guy, and now I'm starting to realize that that term, I probably should have googled the correct term for newbie. But anyway, like I said, um, once he got to know everybody, it was pretty much smooth sailing. And he was, you know, just waiting to get out. <laughs> it was ridiculous, though, how the media painted him. And it was definitely... 
Wait a minute. I'm looking at my notes right here. I can't really tell what I was trying to say there. I think I was typing as I was thinking, and then, like, my thoughts got ahead of my typing, so. It made me look ignorant last week because I thought I knew all the facts and with the videos that we saw, and here we have this new information published on my birthday. I learned the truth, and that is... You believe nothing. You believe none of what you hear and half of that you see. My guy was 17, year old, 17 years old just trying to help out his community because he believed in the good of humanity and that you, should be, you shouldn't be burning down buildings and there's like a right and wrong way to protest. He's right about that. And as a black man, I understand the hate and the anger that we feel for the injustices that this country continues to ignore. Like, dude was probably scared for his life out there trying to protect his community and help out. I know I made the comment about him dressed up Call of Duty style, and he was like, he was ready for war and stuff. It's ridiculous. and But that's a failure and mistake on my part for not getting all the facts. Again, I do apologize to Mr. Kyle Rittenhouse. I hope I didn't pronounce your name wrong. But yeah, man, <clears throat> it's sad. It's sad that that's what this country has came to, come to. Now, with all due respect, I don't think I can get down with the Kardashians. I say this because I was rooting for her and Kanye. West. Did I do that right? That was West. What, what, what is this? What is this? Somebody tell me. What is this? What am I doing? I say this because I was rooting for her and Kanye. I support strong, successful black families and have, having seen on TV, like, what What was I doing? What? Come on. What are you, bruh, what? Okay, I support strong, successful black families, and having seen it on TV as a kid like myself, like, I looked up to that. Like, I grew up with both of my parents in the home, and they're pretty successful. You know what I'm saying? They raised a successful young man. (laughs) I believe everyone has their ups and downs, and for Kanye, he was probably going through a lot. Media chose to attack and exploit that. Here is yet another example of how the media, like, twists things and ruins lives, in my opinion. Kardashians televised their entire life and I were in Ye's shoes, I don't think I could do it. I mean, being in front of all those cameras, capturing every private moment of your life with your wife and kids, like, no conversation is private whatsoever. Like, cameras are constantly rolling because they're filming a TV show about their life. And having it put together for America's entertainment. Then we enter contracts and they want to come into my marriage, my home, telling me how to raise my kids, what to eat, what to wear, what to say, when to wake up, what to do when you wake up, and what to do when your ratings go up, to make the ratings go up, yeah. <clears throat> I think I'll, I go a little insane myself, really, just reading into all that. I mean, I don't know a lot about their situation, but it seems pretty obvious to me. The media has it out for negativity and that, and that stuff sells. Anything that sells, they will put out. Anything to get views. And a good story that sells and gets rating is the destruction of successful, strong black families. Another example would be with the uh, same thing they did with uh, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Like, entanglement, my... I had to bleep that out. I don't want kids listening to this and thinking, Oh, wow, it's okay to cuss. <laughs> I believe people make mistakes and fall off the wagon and stray away from their spouse. I believe marriage is a sacred ceremony. And your problems, you should seek God to fix. Okay, I wrote that wrong. I believe marriage is a sacred ceremony, sacred private life. No, 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 no. I believe marriage should be kept private. If I was to have a marriage, I want my like my marriage life to be private. I don't want it all on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't want it on the media. I don't want everybody like saying congratulations. If I'm going to get married, I'm just going to do it, you know, with a small group of people that have been there from the start. And that's just going to be it for me. That's just, that's just me personally. I don't need all that extra stuff in there. And this is um, this is talking for like you know, like, I don't like how they do this to famous people with, like, with their lives being so open. Meanwhile, as common folk, 
guys like me were taught and raised not to discuss what goes on in the home. Like, if you're having problems, you don't, that doesn't leave the house, you know, that stays at the house. But with today's society, you can't, what can you do, you know? It's just the way of the world now. Everybody's supposed to know all of your business and have access to you 24-7. So there really isn't, is no private life. So it's like, we're being, it feels like we're being exploited and we're letting it happen, which is why I really don't post a lot about my private stuff, private life on Facebook and all that anymore, or Snapchat for that matter. It's like, I used to post a lot of personal stuff that I was going through and people that I would date. I do women crush Wednesdays and all that extra stuff. And then I had to stop and think like, why am I doing this? How has this benefited me or my partner? Like, neither one of us is benefiting from the situation. It, it just makes you feel good. And, like, that surface level, like, I'm trying to find, like, I'm trying to, like, grow roots and build with you. Like, a woman crush Wednesday. Screw that. What, what do, again, what is that? What is it? How do I benefit from a man crush Monday? How? It took me a while to grow out of that childish state that I was in. Because, like, I would get mad if I didn't have a man crush Monday. I'd get mad if... My chick was like, well, this is my man crush Monday, even though he's my friend, my best friend, who just happens to be, like, plays for the other team. And I'm like, okay, that's, I guess that's okay, but I'm still jelly, because it's not me. But now it's like, it is what it is, you know? Like, real people, like, you grow up, you eventually you grow up and you realize, all right, maybe I was a little, a little too childish, but I just, like I said... The whole famous people getting their lives exploited like that, and especially black famous people, it's it's ridiculous, you know? We can't get a win. I also keep wondering why they are making movies about black men having relationships with multiple women, substance abuse, tearing apart families, physical abuse towards our spouses, slavery movies that love seeing... Cause they, <clears throat> slavery movies, like... It feels like they love seeing us and change, and that sells. Like, problems within the home, our kids out on the street robbing and killing each other, joining gangs, material things, promoting single-parent homes, drug abuse, and alcoholism. Like, does anybody else think about these things? Sometimes I wonder if I'm the only one. And if I'm the only one, I mean, at least I'm putting it out in the open and talking about it or trying to talk about it. This is the stuff that I want to talk about, not who got the latest J's or who got the, the newest car or whatever. Like, I don't care about any of that stuff. I want to, like, fix problems within the community, and it starts with this stuff right here. Like, I saw something about Billie Eilish, too. Like, she lost, like, 100,000 followers or so for a magazine cover she did. I mean, people are criticizing her. Chris, criticizing her. What does that mean? Chris, he said he was, she was criticizing her. People criticizing her left and right, telling her that she should, telling her what she should do with her body. And I was like, are you serious? And why are we scared of big boobs? This is in a 70 where everyone's skinnier than a twig, sniffing coke and eating, you know, and ODing. Like, leave her curves alone. If it's not for you, I get that. But you don't have to make make it known to the public trying to make someone feel bad. Like, the abuse this girl is receiving online is ridiculous. Like, she is a beautiful woman, a beautiful human, just like the rest of us. Everyone, <clears throat> every now and then, we want to feel sexy or do a photo ship. Photo ship. What, what's a photo ship? Oh, my God. I'm making up words. That's how tired I am. I'm making up words. Every now and then, we want to feel sexy, so we do, we get all dressed up, and, you know, we take a couple photos, and, I mean, not all of us get to be on a magazine. I was in a magazine. I was fully clothed, and you only saw my, uh, my face? Or did you, did you see my jacket? I'll have to dig out the, uh, the, the magazine for you one day so you can see it. It's somewhere. I know that... Wait a minute. This might be it right here. Hold on. One second. I know it's been more than one second. Yep. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Boom. In the magazine. I saved it. But, yeah, you only see my head. 
And for those who think that I'm lying, this is the Showcase magazine. I wonder if I'm allowed to do this. Will I get canceled? Hmm. The world may never know. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So we got Showcase Magazine. This is, is it say from January 2017. Free. <laughs> and then if you flip to page 23. Wow. 23. Huh. Who was born on the 23rd of November? <laughs> Bing. There I am. So like, like I said, Every now and then you want to feel good about yourself. So you dress up, you do your little photo shoot, they put it on the magazine. Boom, bada, bing. Ah. But this cancel culture stuff, like, or the judges of the internet, must think they are, must think they got or something. Like, letting the, we can let the Kardashians let loose on the internet and television while others are discouraged and outcasted for not, e for not even doing the same thing. It's ridiculous. What we say is right and what we say is wrong. Like, I understand why someone would cover their body on purpose because I used to do the same thing. But unlike her, I was ashamed of my body. Like, growing up, I was shorter than everybody else. I didn't have a lot of hair where everyone was getting theirs, like on the calves, chest, forearms, nether regions. Uh, did I say face? Face. I didn't get a mustache until, like, t 10th or 11th grade, really. And even then, it was still peach fuzz. Everybody else had full beards by then, and it's like, what are they drinking? What are they putting in the milk? <laughs> Why is the milk not working for me? <laughs> I also didn't gain any muscle mass until after graduating from college in 2018. Here we are, 2021, and I'm still struggling to put on muscle mass. <sighs> I tried wearing tight stuff to fit my figure, you know, to make my calves look bigger and you know, make my, my, you know, make me look good, feel good, but it didn't look good on me. Now I dress comfortable. I rock sweats, oversized t-shirts, maybe a hoodie if it's cold, some Nikes, and a beanie from time to time. Sometimes I shave my head all the way, but I just had them recently push my hairline back for me so that I can grow the hair out. <sighs> it's getting cold and I do not want to get sick. Do not want to get sick. So, I had them push the hairline back. I just have the, mic, the magazine now. Push the hairline back, make me look good, feel good, you know. And I just don't understand how we let ourselves become this way. Like, we take the internet and abuse it every day. Sadly, more than a porn addict on X XNXX. Don't ask me how I know what that site is. Don't look that up. I've been thinking about moving because the city that I'm in is, like, lacking in the grocery stores. There's not as much meat. There's expired meat as well, and they go bad. It goes bad quicker. Like they don't have as much product. They're always missing what you need, and only have one or one or two items of it of that product left. It's like a fifty fifty shot whenever you go to the grocery store or if you're going out to eat. Like my parents came down last weekend, and we went to the Waffle House out there beside the hotel. Service was trash. The food was trash. Like it was ridiculous. Like, the lady, she had an attitude the whole entire time. And I'm like, why do you, why, what's the, why? Why are you so upset? Huh? You have, here you have an opportunity to make $20. 15 I mean, we could have been very generous and tipped you 50 but we didn't even do that. It's like, we tipped you what we thought your service was. I lost my train of thought. Mm-hmm. This is why this is the ADHD to life podcast, because I've got ADHD and that stuff still runs rampant. Wreaking havoc going on. Anyway, the quality of living here just don't match the price. Like, we've been trying to start our life here for a while, managing to get by with God's grace. It was God's grace. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> we made it this far. Trust me. Whew, it's been hard. Rough. Rough. But it's going to be all right. Our neighbors here, don't even get me started, like, they are disrespectful, and I think I already explained this about how I asked them nicely to keep the volume down, the jumping around, the running around, whatever they're doing up there, the boom, 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 but they just don't get it, like, 
we live here too, you know. You got people around you. And I'm sure we'd all like to sleep at night. Or if you work nights, you'd like to sleep a little bit during the day. And I don't want to have to call the police. Why do the police have to be called for this instance? For this situation? I feel like we lived together in a community, a little bubble, you know, we're stacked on top of each other like sardines. Why not work our differences out, you know, in person versus having a third party come in and intervene? That's not going to help either one of us. That's only going to create more tension. You know what I'm saying? Making the that's it's gonna make the environment hostile. And I don't want to have to do that, but your man is never home, so I'm just like, well, what do I do? Because this is gonna, it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna look good, you know. I thought we had a mutual understanding, but it, they they clearly don't care. So from now on, I'm playing my saxophone. I'm watching my movies. I'm making my music in the middle of the night. One of these days, when I trust people enough. To be in my life, I throw a little party. Woo, woo, party over here. Woo, woo, and see how they like it. Me without sleep is like poking the sleeping bear. I don't think before I act, I will hurt your feelings. I may inflict a little physical pain to get my point across. I'm more aggressive than I usually am. I am a little loopy and crazy. I tend to ride on top of cars. Zero to hundred real quick. Attitudes all day, and for some reason the inner thug comes out like. Dude called me out at work because I had snapped out because I had, I assumed or I watched somebody get on a pallet jack that I thought was mine. He said he turned into a thug, my guy. Had the stick in your hand. You had the walk going, the look. And he said he was scared for his life. And he was like, well, I'm lacking the day. ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> he used to say, I need my sleep. Bam. I wonder if there's anything else I wanted to talk about first ever video podcast just me well not first ever video podcast I feel there's too many words in that sentence let me know in the comments what did you think I'm trying here I really am please (laughs) oh man I'm a character I also like changing my voice that helps it's I do it for personal amusement so if you ever hear me change my voice like this while I'm talking it's it's for me, you know, like it, it, I do things that bring me joy. You do things that bring you joy. That's one of the things that bring me joy. I thought about voice acting. What do you think? Uh, I'm just buying time here at this point. I think I should let it go. Let it go like frozen. Let it go. Uh, let me stop. I'm I'm getting dehydrated. I'm getting dehydrated. <sighs> Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of ADHD to Life podcast. I do apologize for nothing yeet you thought because i said i was gonna stop apologizing (laughs) all right peace